Good morning. In this video, we'll try to discuss the pile load test. Now, in the few videos back, we had said that to arrive at the ultimate capacity of a pile foundation, you have four different methods, at least in your syllabus. Number one is a static formula. Number two is a dynamic formula. Number three is the in-situ penetration methods. And number four is a pile load test. The static method and dynamic methods are already discussed in the previous videos shared. And I've skipped the in-situ penetration methods because it comes towards the last module in your syllabus. So we'll try to discuss that in detail in the last module. Now, pile load test is the most precise one to arrive at the ultimate capacity. Static method, the dynamic formula, and in-situ methods are kind of approximate methods. Pile load test, we do the actual load test at the site to arrive at the ultimate capacity. So whatever value that you get from the pile load test is the most dependable one. Now, uh, the process of pile load test I'll briefly discuss here. You have what is called as a test pile, which is a pile that's chosen for the pile load test exclusively. It may or may not be a working pile. There's another term called the initial test. It is done on test piles to determine the save load or the allowable load or the ultimate load capacity. Now these two terms are quite quite popular in practice test pile and initial test. Now in this figure you can see the laying of a reinforcement cage into the pile cavity. So the process is quite simple. You are casting the pile at site for which you are excavating the soil out. So you create essentially a cavity there and you lower the reinforcement cage, the properly designed reinforcement cage into the cavity thus formed and you concrete that cavity. So what you get is a concrete pile which is bored cast in situ pile. Bored because you have taken the soil out and you've cast it at site so it's cast in situ pile. So this is a method in which you cast the pile at the site. Now once you've completed the casting and waited for the, for, for the cement and the concrete to set and harden, you carry out what is called as a pile load test. Now these are the different types of pile load tests. Constant rate of penetration test, cyclic load test, lateral load test, pull out test. Briefly, these are the different types of pile load tests, though you have other options as well. Now this is a photograph taken in Kerala where there was a pile load test being carried out. Now to the right side you see a picture in which there's a hydraulic jack placed on a circular plate which is of steel and below which you have the pile foundation. So fundamentally what you've done is after casting and after allowing the concrete to harden you have placed a steel disc over the pile foundation after leveling and over which you have kept the hydraulic jack. Now the hydraulic jack is a reaction system and it transfers the load from what we call as a Kent lead shear. So this hydraulic system is below the girder that you see here. So you can't see the hydraulic system in this figure because that's within the whole system of girders and the Kent ledge. So anyways, you have such kind of a system to apply the load. Now the process is that the test pile is installed between the two reaction piles or the anchor piles. The spacing is kept three times the diameter or 2.5 meter clear from the anchor pile. Now anchor piles are nothing but, nothing but the ones that you use on either side of the test pile. Because when you, when you have to apply an axial compressive load onto the test pile, there should be some mechanism which transfers the reaction onto the soil. So these mechanisms are called reaction piles or anchor piles. They are usually of a screw type. Or maybe under rim piles because they'll have to carry the tensile force. Now the spacing as I said is kept at least three times the diameter or maybe 2.5 meter clear from the anchor pile. And after a rest period which is usually one month in clay and three days in sand the pile load test is carried out and the load is applied through the hydraulic jack touched on a reaction girder. You can see the reaction girder here which are ISMB sections uh, designed properly to carry the expected ultimate load. Now the reaction girder carries a dead load or what we call as a Kent Lech. Now in this figure the Kent Lech is, is nothing but uh, plastic sacks filled with soil and aggregate and you have created 
kind of a fencing mechanism within which you have used the soil again as a cantilage. So anyways, you'll have to apply the maximum expected load over the cantilage system. So let's 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 assume that the expected ultimate load for the pile load test is 100 ton. So you'll have to place at least 140 tons here so that it gets and provides the reaction onto the pile. Now the load is actually applied in increments of 20 percentage of the allowable load. Again, let's assume that the allowable load is uh, 100 tons. So initially you will apply uh, 20 tons and you allow the pile had deformation to get monitored and later on you you apply another 20 tons etc so they are applied in increments and the pile had deformations are measured using the dial gauges now the same dial gauges that you have used in your perhaps in your laboratories so this is a dial gauge system that uh, rests on uh, on us on a on a rigid uh, bar here in this picture and which is kept as a reference beam and the pile had deformations are measured from the dial gauges in millimeter range usually so as a schematic picture i've represented the pile load test here you have the pile here about which you have uh, you have the hydraulic jack system and the jack system gets its reaction from the reaction beam over which you have kept the dead load or the cantilever system and these are the anchor uh, these are the uh, sections that are used to to, to anchor to the anchor piles and this is a dial gate system here so what really happens is that when the jack is operated it moves to the upward direction and the reaction beam with the dead load resists its movement so what really happens is that that force is transferred onto the pile foundation so when the jack tries to move upward the reaction beam tries to push it downward and that is acting as a compressive load onto the pile foundation. So when the compressive load is applied, there would obviously be deformation which is measured using the dial gauge. Now this particular test is an axial compressive test, compression load test to arrive at the ultimate compressive load. Of course there are tests for determination of ultimate lateral load, the ultimate pull out load, the cyclic load test to differentiate the skin friction and end bearing etc. So if you are interested further, you can appear for the advanced foundation engineering course that I'm dealing uh, in which these, these test methods on lateral load test and ultimate load for tensile tests, etc. are discussed. Anyways, for your KTU syllabus, Geotechnical Engineering 2, you don't have to delve into the details of the lateral test and the tensile test, etc. Now, if, once we have completed the test, you'll get something like a load versus deformation plot now if the deformation is measured from the dial gauge and the load is taken from the hydraulic system that will have a gauge from which you can read the load applied so based on which you'll get a load versus deformation plot and from that load versus de deformation plot indian standard 2911 part 4 which gives a safe load criteria for pile load tests has some stipulations now the safe load on a single pile for the initial test would be the least of the following first one two-third of the load of the final load at which the total displacement attains a value of 10 12 millimeter which means from the load versus deformation plot you get 12 millimeter here You'll get a load corresponding to the 12 millimeter here, which is Q1. You take the two thirds of that value. So that's number one. Number two is you go for the 50% of the final load at the total displacement is equal to 10% of the pile diameter in case of uniform diameter piles and 7.5% in case of the under rim pile bulb, which means let's assume that you have a pile of diameter uh, let's say 500 millimeters. So you take 10% of that 500 millimeters in the deformation plot and you try to see what load will give you that value. So let's say that's Q2. So you, so you take half of Q2, 50% of the load at which the displacement is equal to 10% of the pile diameter. So you have two criteria here 
from which you will get two different loads. You take the least of these two to arrive at the safe load. Now this is a safe load criteria stipulated by Indian Standard Code. Of course, there are different uh, uh, criteria for arriving at the safe load. Uh, there could be other Euro codes, there could be American code system to arrive at the ultimate load and the safe load, etc. But what we follow here in practice is the Indian Standard Method in which you take the least of these two loads that you have obtained from the load versus displacement plot. 